cloud implementation, data center industry trends, the dynamic market. So good morning, everyone. It's Dan Scarborough here with Data Center Hawk. I'm excited today. We are talking this morning with Alexi Taipele from one of the principal founders of Hyperco. Um, so in, instead of me telling everyone about who you are, Alexi, and Hyperco, would you do me the, the favor of just telling the audience a bit of a background on yourself, on Hyperco, you know, where it came from and where you are currently and what the plan is? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Dan, for having having me on, and uh, my pleasure. I, I I will give you a short short intro to myself, and then then to Hyperco. So as as Dan said, I'm Alexi Taipal. I'm one of the founders of Hyperco. I'm born and raised in uh, Helsinki, Finland, and uh, started my career actually as an entrepreneur. Founded my first company straight from school, uh, but uh, decided along the way that maybe I should also go work for somebody else rather than run my companies from uh, from the very beginning. So I, I grew the company to uh, actually the largest provider of 3D visual marketing materials for construction companies in Finland. But uh, I remained uh, there more as a board board member through, through after the first few years. But then actually managed to sold the company to a private equity fund uh, in 2020. So so pretty uh, like a successful, successful uh, first venture and now conducting my second and bigger, bigger venture now with Hypergo. But uh, uh, continuing on my background, uh, after my first uh, venture, I've worked at uh, Bain & Company as a strategy consultant for a few years, and then ended up at NREP, which is the largest Nordic private equity real estate player with around 10 billion of assets. And and at NREP, actually, I met some very bright guys uh, uh, called Timo, Timo Pohjanpala and Ville Vartiainen. And uh, we, we ended up becoming the founders of Hyperco. So, so that's, that's where we all have our background, background in. And, and how, we, how we founded Hyperco, it was around two years ago, we started to, started to research the data center market. Uh, NREP has, ha- hadn't been active in the data center market, but we viewed it as interesting niche niche market, which was also fairly fairly complex and not many people understand it. So, but uh, we viewed it as interesting, and we also saw that in the U.S. there are many many of these built to suit players entering the market and being very successful there. But in the Nordic region, we didn't really see the kind of uh, development oriented investors in the space. So we we saw that there there would be a product product market fit for a new new entrant. And we also also saw that Nordic region, like we've seen at NREP, how big part the sustainability is for all investments. So we, uh, we truly believe that Nordics will pull above its weight in the future as well. So we saw the Nordic as a great place to be. And then a third point, we also think that this industry is becoming more mature and there's more institutional capital coming in. So you need the low return requirement capital to be competitive in this space. And due to our background of doing above 1 billion of investment at NREP, we were we could raise this kind of institutional capital. So we ended up then raising capital from a pension fund Varma in Finland and from actually from NREP as well. So those are our capital partners in Hyperco. Okay, cool. And and it's in terms of the funds remit, you know, from what I understand, you're initially very focused on Finland. You know, what what talk talk me through, you know, a what the fund, where you're at from a funding perspective, what sort of assets you're acquiring, um, and then talk to me a little bit more about kind of Finland and, and and how you feel Finland is a competitive market for this sector. Yeah, so so obviously our 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 uh, kind of we want to be a Nordic player. I think uh, focusing only on Finland does does not make sense in the long run. But since our team is based in Finland, that's that's our kind of home turf. And we're definitely starting starting there. And our first investments will be conducted conducted likely in Finland. And what we're currently looking at, we're looking at standing standing investments where there's uh, a standing or existing data center assets where there's development potential. And then on the other hand, we're in discussions with uh, multiple tech- technology companies on built to suit opportunities in, in the Nordic region and also in Finland. 
And uh, regarding the funding, we have uh, 200 million of investment capacity committed by our investors at this stage, but obviously the investors are also also looking to deploy more more capital into the space if we're uh, successful in our, with our first investments. Cool. And and in terms of those type of assets that you're looking at, can you, you know, again, I, I don't know how much you're able to talk about publicly, but can you talk about the assets that you're you're looking at, or you know, where you're at in terms of of, of, of that deal flow? Yeah, so so obviously the markets mar- markets in the Nordic region, they're they're not like the flat flat market, so the a- number of assets is limited limited for sure. But we still see some opportunities as investments in uh, in current assets. There might be some a little bit older older data centers who are owned by various uh, various owners. It might be owned by the tenants themselves, or it might be owned by some third parties who are not focused on data centers. And quite often we see some, uh, uh, some uh, refurbishing needs with these data centers. We see opportunity to execute uh, waste heat recovery uh, and sustainability upgrades. We see a lot of hands-on value creation that we can realize, realize with these assets. And we also see that owners are not necessarily committed to owning data centers uh, uh, forever. So, so we see a good match there, but uh, to be transparent, uh, the, where we see the most opportunities is with these built to suit opportunities and greenfield projects in the long run, since the existing asset, asset base is just uh, fairly, fairly limited. Yeah, I was going to ask you kind of the, the difference between the, your model from a retail wholesale kind of built to suit perspective, whether you're going to be operating, you know, whether your intention is just to be kind of the asset owner. Um, you know, so are you open to all of those options or, or do you have a preference? Is your preference to just be the build to suit kind of triple, a triple net lease with a large organization? Is that what's the, 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 the main kind of remit of the fund? Yeah, so we're definitely uh, uh, approaching this, uh, this investment more from the development and real estate and investment side. So uh, compared to typical players of the industry who are potentially coming more from the co-location, retail co-location side and focused on operations, we, we want to build a team that is uh, able to execute uh, b- very well all the investments and build, uh, build the best data centers as quickly as possible and as uh, low, low cost as possible. But uh, on the other hand, we, we see we need to be flexible to tailor for the needs of the largest uh, hyperscale customers. So we are offering a full suite of uh, different type of products. So we can do anything from uh, pure powered shell to wholesale built to suit data center where it's triple net lease. But then uh, as, uh, as, as in some cases, we can also handle the operations, but likely we'll use, utilize at this stage a third party operator to handle handle the operations. So definitely we're not operations is not the, not our core competence. It's more, more from the, from the uh, design and design and build, build phase that we, uh, we are coming from. And we're also seeing the hyperscale customers in uh, many, many regions. They already have some presence. They, they want to operate themselves. So we see a good, good fit there with the build to suit data centers that are lead to them. So if you think about the markets that you're looking at, kind of the, the, you know, Finland is your home turf, as we said, but then the wider um, regions, including Sweden, Norway and Denmark, you know, I, I mean, Finland, I know that there's been activity there for organisations that we're aware of, but how do you feel Finland competes with those other locations as a, as a, as a, as a country for hyperscale customers? Do you feel like you're getting as much interest as there's been in, say Sweden or you know what where do you feel like a Finland is in terms of what it's got to offer and then how how it, it it's performing against some of the other uh, countries in the region yeah that's a that's a great question Dan so so as a as a, as you may all the all the listeners might not might not be aware of <laughs> Finland Finland the data center market but it's it's not that many hyperscalers that have have located there, but we have uh, Google's largest data center in Europe, in uh, in Hamina. So that's uh, around 200 megawatts plus at this stage. So 
there is uh, some uh, hyperscale activity in Finland, but uh, not not that much from other players at this stage. What what I think is the main reason Finland has been lagging a bit the other Nordic countries, uh, Sweden and Norway and Denmark, is that we we until last year we had the electricity tax on a much higher level than the other countries. So it was actually the the amount of tax was 14 times higher than compared to Sweden. So it was a it was a real real issue issue in attracting new investments to Finland. But now actually the uh, tax has been lowered to the EU minimum level. Uh, I think beginning of this year. So now we are uh, very much competitive with other other regions. In what it comes to electricity prices, we're fairly in line in line with other other Nordic countries, maybe in uh, above in some, compared to Norway a bit. But then where we are excelling compared to other Nordic countries, we have very good electricity networks and good availability of green power uh, uh, compared to other, other Nordic regions. So there's a lot of uh, opportunities for greenfield development with quick, quick timelines to deploy. So that's where we see the advantage. Also, I, I, like, uh, like location-wise, the, the Nordic countries are fairly similar, but what what is interesting to Finland is the proximity to Russia and Asia with the, and potentially with the Arctic connectives that realizes the cable cable from the Arctic Sea to, to Asia that would likely land in Finland and Finland would be kind of the landing landing point towards that. Are you, um, are you I mean, I've been look, seeing, looking at a, a lot of this kind of crypto currency sector as well. Um, and I know that there is a, you know, there's been a lot of demand from that sector, in, in particular in in places like Norway. Um, are you seeing interest from the crypto sector in Finland as well? Yes, yes, Dan, definitely. There's a there's a lot of lot of interest from the sector, and I guess that's just a testament also for for the kind of cost effectiveness of uh, Nordic Nordic countries, and there definitely a lot of crypto. Crypto interest also to Finland, uh, as as we have heard uh, that it might not be as easy to locate to uh, Norway or some of the some of the areas to get quickly quickly a uh, uh, large amounts of capacity. So definitely there is interest for sites sites in Finland where you could get quickly a lot of lot of uh, plus plus ten megawatts or even plus hundred megawatts of capacity. Uh, as a company, we're not. We're not focused on the crypto demand. We're, we're at this stage mostly follow, following the space and seeing how it evolves. I think there's some obviously some concerns around uh, uh, the environmental impact of, of crypto crypto mining in general, and obviously uh, potential regulations and issues issues with the regulators on uh, on the future of crypto. But I, and then personally, I think it's interesting interesting world, and we're following it closely and seeing seeing where it's going. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, I'm I'm assuming that the power makeup in Finland is, you know, close to 100% renewable, right? It, is it 100% renewable, or where are you at from a grid mix in in Finland? Uh, in Finland, we're around 50% renewable, and then uh, I, I would say largely like a non-fossil fuel uh, based. So, so there's a like the remaining part of the electricity is nuclear so there's which is uh, in some some aspects still not fossil fuels so so there's and uh, and there there's a lot of new green green electricity coming in online a lot of wind a lot of hydro so you can definitely get the vast vast amount of uh, green electricity yeah because i think that you know having crypto in a location that has got access to cleaner power is is actually a good thing um you know as opposed to having it located in locations that are more reliant on brown power or fossil you know coal related power assets or gas related power assets so i know that there's been a bit of controversy in some of the the countries that have got renewable large amounts of renewable energy in terms of giving that capacity or providing that capacity to the the mining community but i do think that there is a there is a there is a, a good thing in that in in those types of workloads being located on a renewable grid. I think it makes a lot more sense than them being located on a a non renewable grid. Um, so no, it's interesting. So in terms of the plans, what where do you see you guys being in the next 
couple of years. I mean, I'm assuming that, you know, you've got some plans to expand quite quickly into the Nordics. What about expanding outside of the Nordics? Have you got a, can you give us your kind of roadmap in terms of timeline and, and locations? Yeah, so so as I said, we definitely want to be a Nordic player and, and able to serve our customers across the Nordic countries. And we're building a Nordic team at the moment. We're already hiring in other other countries and, and uh, building building a team that is uh, multinational. And, uh, and obviously already we have NREP as our investor who has offices in all, all Nordic Nordic countries and that, that way supporting us where we necessarily don't do not have the boots on the ground yet. So within a year or two, we are, will be in the Nordic region and, uh, and be able to uh, be able to execute on uh, build to suit opportunities in other other Nordic countries. And we at, at the moment, we already have holds. Holds on, holds on many plots in uh, Finland, and we're looking at plots in other other Nordic countries, and we'll we'll uh, try to get holds on holds to those uh, within within this year. And regarding the uh, asset deals, we're making the first deals now in Finland, and then look at the other Nordic Nordic countries like later later this year or early next year, and uh, start to build the Nordic Nordic portfolio. And uh, our ambition with our current Current investors is to build a, a portfolio of assets in the Nordic countries of plus one billion euros within the coming coming few years. Regarding uh, uh, expansions to other other regions, uh, that's still very much uh, uh, on a longer longer horizon. What, but we're definitely following the markets closely. I think there's a lot of interesting regions, and we we are looking at the, a little bit like the eastern eastern European region. We see a lot of activity in. In Poland and uh, potentially in other other places close to close to that that area, so that might be one one route route to go to after after uh, having a full presence in Nordics. But we're definitely focused on focused on building sustainable data centers in Nordics, and we also feel that more of the capacity should be located in in places where you can do sustainable data centers and utilize the waste heat waste heat of generated by the data centers in district heating networks as, as so you are able to do in, in places like Finland and Sweden, Norway and Denmark. Yeah, so it's interesting because I was going to talk to you about kind of ESG, we use that term, right? Um, I'm assuming that as a fund, you've got some pretty stringent ESG commitments that you're making. Um, and I'm assuming that part of those commitments mean that you know the the assets that you're buying there is a commitment to acquiring green assets or using you know renewable ne- energy using you know sustainable construction solutions all of that type of side of things do you have how well kind of embedded in the business is that you know are you you know looking at acquiring existing assets then making them more sustainable if you build new assets do you have kind of a a green construction. What is the ESG wrap uh, that you've got around your kind of fund structure um, and the assets that you're buying and developing? Yeah, that's that's a great question. So, so I think the ESG is a uh, very much core of our investment strategy. Uh, we we truly truly believe that uh, making uh, sustainable investments is or also making better investments and. We we we've, we've seen that at NREP and other real estate segments very concretely. Like you can, if you have a uh, two office buildings, the other one is uh, LEED certified platinum. The other one is just uh, without any certificate. The the certified and more sustainable building will go for much much higher value uh, in the market. So so we see it uh, in a similar way in data centers. It's not that we. Uh, obviously, it's the right thing to do to be more sustainable. But we truly believe that you make better investments by investing in sustainability. So we're 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 taking a lot of bets bets in that that the data centers will also become more sustainable, and sustainable data centers will be more valuable than non-sustainable. And how how we look at the sustainability, I think the most interesting part is obviously. Obviously, the use of electricity and energy, and and uh, and in that way, 
you need to use green electricity, but I, I think that's just one part of the equation. And I think the uh, m most pressing thing is to utilize the waste heat that is generated by, by these data centers, since that's a huge wasted opportunity if that's not captured since uh, around 95% of the, of the energy that is consumed by the servers is actually transferred to heat. And you could actually, actually warm up the cities of the future with that. And th that's exactly what we're planning to do with almost all of our investments. Uh, we, we have, uh, we have Ari, a guy named Ari Kurvi who operated, uh, operated uh, was first guy opening the Google data center in Finland and then uh, 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 opening the Yandex data center in Mansala, Finland. He, he was one of the first guys in the world who uh, has uh, uh, done this kind of waste heat recovery to district heating network system. And it's currently uh, in Yandex data center warming around 80% 80, 80 of the whole need of the city of Mansala with that one uh, around 15 megawatt data center. So there's huge, huge opportunity in that. And that's what we're mostly focused on to capture since that's kind of the low hanging fruit in our, our view. Obviously, there is other other things that we need to take into account, like during construction, utilizing uh, sustainable materials and other sustainability levers. But the energy related topics are uh, in magnitude uh, so much larger than others. That that's where our most of our focus is on in the beginning. Excellent, Alexi. Well, listen, it's been very good to speak to you today. And I thank you very much for your time. And we look forward to following Hyperco as you grow and develop and um, seeing how things progress. It sounds like you are a, a fresh set of eyes in a increasingly exciting market. So, um, so yeah, thanks very much. And thanks, Dan. It was uh, my pleasure.